In this segment of CSI Coatesville, we're going to explore the judicial system. Do you recognize the document behind me? I hope you do. It's the United States Constitution. This is the basis of all law in the United States. In this program, we're going to take a look specifically at the types of law, our rights as citizens, and types of crime. First, types of law. As I mentioned a moment ago, there's constitutional law found in the Constitution. This is the highest authority that, of law that we have in the United States. There's also statutory law as well. These are laws that are passed by legislatures. There's also common or what's known as case law as well. In any given trial, the court seeks to apply both constitutional and statutory law. So therefore, it's the judge's responsibility, it's the court's responsibility to interpret those laws in particular cases. Next, there's civil law. And as you can see, this is the type of law that provides for damages for injured parties. Usually that's in a monetary form. Next is criminal law. These are regulations that concern the acceptable limits of conduct, such as stealing, robbing a bank, and so forth. And then there's a little known body of law known as equity law. These regard court injunctions, restraining orders that are not covered by common law. Finally, there's administrative law. These are rules that control governmental agencies, such as the Social Security, the Internal Revenue Service, and so forth. For example, if you had a friend that became disabled and they applied for Social Security benefits as a disabled person, they may be denied that claim. This court gives the opportunity for that claim to be appealed before an administrative law judge who will then interpret the policies of, for example, the Social Security Administration to see to it that those laws were accurately applied in the applicant's case for benefits. In some cases, those applications for benefits may be approved. We also want to take a look at the Bill of Rights as well. One of the most important rights that are provided for us in the Bill of Rights is the fact that in the United States court system, a defendant is presumed innocent until proven guilty. We're also protected against unreasonable searches and seizures as well. A person can't be arrested without a probable cause. There can be no unreasonable seizure of personal property. A person can't be compelled to testify against themselves. An arrestee must be able to be fairly questioned by the police. In other words, they can't be coerced. In our court system, we're also protected from physical harm throughout the justice process. We have a right to consult an attorney. We have a right to a trial by a jury of our peers, given the right to understand the charges that are laid against us. We have the right to cross-examine prosecution witnesses. We have the right to speak on our own behalf and present witnesses for the defense. We also have a right known as double jeopardy where we can't be tried twice for the same crime. And if found guilty, and if found guilty, we are protected from cruel and unusual punishments resulting from that sentence. We have a right to due process. In other words, all the legal provisions that are applied throughout the justice process must be applied equally to all people, regardless of their background. We have a right to a speedy trial. In other words, there shouldn't be an unreasonable length of imprisonment leading up to the trial date. We are afforded the right against excessive bail. We are afforded the right against excessive fines. And to be tried, the same as others, regardless 
of race, gender, religious preference, country of origin, or other personal attributes. Now, along with those rights, there was a case law ruling based upon constitutional law that a person must be informed of his or her constitutional rights if they are being placed under arrest. And you have that summary below, a typical minimal statement of the Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney you, and to have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be provided for you at the government's expense. Now, there are basically three types of crimes, and I have them listed here in terms of increasing severity. First, an infraction. A minor offense, a petty crime, this would be something similar to a parking ticket. You don't appear at court unless you're going to appeal that infraction. Next, there are misdemeanors. These are more serious crimes that are punishable by a small fine or a short jail sentence. Some of these a person would be fingerprinted for, such as shoplifting. And third is the felony. This is a major crime punishable by fines and or more than one year in prison, such as stealing a car or threatening someone with bodily harm. Here are some questions to consider. What are some of the important differences between criminal law and civil law? Do Miranda rights apply to physical evidence as well as testimonial evidence? How do you know when a police officer may be overstepping his authority in questioning a citizen? And finally, why are felonies something that a high school student especially wants to avoid being convicted of? Well, this is a very brief review of the judicial system. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.